Welcome back to Mayo Clinic Radio. I'm Dr. Tom Shives. And I'm Tracy McRae. Diagnosing cancer usually requires a biopsy. And a biopsy is a procedure to remove a piece of tissue or a sample of cells from the tumor so it can be analyzed in the laboratory. But biopsies have their limitations. The sample might be too small to make a diagnosis. A small sample may not tell the whole story. Some parts of the tumor might be different or higher grade. And sometimes the pathologist can tell it's cancer and it came from somewhere else, but can't tell exactly where. Imperfect science. It sounds like a pickle, Dr. Shives. (laughs) A new option is emerging. A liquid biopsy involves examining cancer-related material like DNA from a blood sample. At this time, a liquid biopsy can't replace a tumor biopsy, but it is showing promise in individualizing approaches to cancer management. And here to discuss liquid biopsy is Mayo Clinic medical oncologist, Dr. Manetta Liu. Welcome back to the program. It's good to see you again. Thank you for having me. Dr. Liu, great to see you. you. So we have relied on a a tissue biopsy for decades Mm -hmm. to get a diagnosis. That all may be changing. I mean, it, is, it still remains the gold standard. Um, I think one of the other downsides of a tissue biopsy that you didn't mention is from the patient perspective. One could argue sticking a needle in an organ, you know, doing surgery, would ideally, if we could avoid that or at least limit that. I have I did, yet I tried I, not to talk about yeah, that. Yeah. I have yet to have a pleasant <laughs> biopsy experience. Exactly, right? It's time away from your family. It's You need a contrast because you need an imaging study to guide it. It causes pain, bruising. I mean, there's so many... But it, I got to tell you, it is better than it used to be because every biopsy we used to do was open. We'd yes. have to go to surgery and either with a local anesthetic or sometimes a general do an, what we call an open biopsy. Now at least they can do it with a needle, usually Correct. under local anesthesia. So it's better than it was. No, it is better. And in, uh, as a companion to that is the fact that our technology has improved to the point that we can do a lot with small bits of tissue. Um, but again, uh, to be able to limit the number of biopsies that we do in this era where we're understanding that tumor biology changes and shifts in response not only to time but to the pressures like treatment, sure. um, in order for us to best manage and treat our patients who are diagnosed with malignancies, we need to stay ahead of the game, right? So to be able to serially sample something like the blood um, would be incredibly helpful. One of the things that Dr. Shives mentioned in the intro was talking about how one tumor might have different yes. grades just all in one tumor, and that hadn't even occurred to me. Yep. So explain a little bit more about that. So it's called tumor heterogeneity. So it's uh, on two levels, one in the setting of uh, multiple tumors. Not The two tumors may not look the same. But even within a single mass, you could actually biopsy different areas of that and find different molecular characteristics. So how do you know you know, what's wow. actually driving that cancer, right? What we biopsy with the needle biopsy is not defined by the biology. It's defined by where it's best to do the biopsy, what's safest and easiest for the patient. Um, so one could argue what ends up in the blood is really what is significant. Like that's the cauldron of the ickiness, so to speak. And that's really where we need to be looking for what is active and has the potential to metastasize and activate cancer. At any stage, because cancer comes in the different stages, and does it show up in the blood right Right away? Uh, early evidence would suggest yes. So the potential for liquid biopsy could be anywhere from active disease and monitoring treatment during active disease. It could be after a diagnosis of early stage cancer where you finished your therapy and you're monitoring for minimal residual disease to try to see if it's ever going to come back. Um, and then it's all about screening, right? Could you imagine having a blood test to do as a screening tool to help us diagnose those, identify uh, cancers earlier, right? You, you think that it will be possible one day? Uh, it's going to be possible pretty soon, I think. We're actually conducting, uh, in collaboration with a company, a very large study to help develop a multi-cancer screening test. Yeah. And there are also efforts within Mayo itself to, to be doing those efforts as well. Is there anything available now where you can pick up cancer in the bloodstream? Uh, there is. Uh, so there are, uh, is an FDA-cleared technology that will allow us to collect circulating tumor cells. So actually cancer cells that are circulating in the bloodstream. Uh, and they correlate with the disease outcomes in metastatic breast cancer, prostate cancer, and colorectal cancer. The issue is that we've never had a demonstration of utility. We know we can find it. We know they mean something, but no one has yet conducted, well, we've conducted the studies. No one successfully demonstrated that acting on that result improved an outcome in patients. So that's currently the effort. 
And now, as you mentioned, we can collect DNA from the blood directly. So instead of needing fancy machines to collect the cells to get DNA, we can actually just get the DNA from the blood. The argument is that uh, is it as pure as collecting the DNA from a cell itself? And those are the comparisons that we're doing now. So, uh, for example, the uh, Cologuard, the stool-based test for colon cancer, is based yes. on DNA. Would it the is. blood test be based on the same sort of thing? So it could be, actually, yes. So there are efforts looking at, so Cologuard is based on methylation patterns of DNA. And so there are efforts to look at methylation patterns on DNA from blood as well. Same but principle. I don't know exactly what methylation. Oh, thank yeah. goodness. <laughs> I thought it was the only one. Uh, it's uh, a different way of basically tagging the DNA. Uh, and you can tag it in different patterns. Our bodies do this. Every All of our DNA is methylated. But those specific patterns can be associated with the development of cancer or with other diseases. It's called so epigenetics. So you're looking for abnormal DNA yep. when you're in the blood and in the stool. Yes. And you can do that now to a limited extent. Mm -hmm. Not uh, to the point where you can actually take a blood sample and say you've got cancer and it's breast cancer. Not yet. What, when will that be? <laughs> so the multi-cancer screening test is um, being developed. Again, this is a large collaboration with a company, um, and the test is actually being developed right now and will be validated. Mayo is participating in a larger study where we're collecting blood specimens from women undergoing screening mammography to serve as the validation set for that. So hopefully within the next you know five years, we'll have something that we'll be able to implement in our patients. I That's can't. the pie in the sky, you know, again. Yeah. Sure. Um, but I don't think it's that far. And the question will be to have a screening tool in the blood, right? We, we want to be, we need to be accurate. We don't want to be sending off alarm bells. To your point, Dr. Shives, it's not just saying there's a cancer signal, but where did it come from? Mm -hmm. Because we have to be able to find it to know how to treat it. And we will need a biopsy to confirm. Um, how does liquid biopsy help individualize treatment then? So again, it allows us to, in the setting of active cancer, so someone's been diagnosed, we've mm -hmm. made a decision to treat. Um, we now have the ability to uh, select targeted therapies based on mutation patterns or changes in the DNA, features of the cancer itself. And so to be able to assess that can those cancer characteristics in relation to time and to treatment exposures, um, we may better be able to identify which therapies are going to work for that patient at the right time. For example, I'm a breast oncologist, and we have so many therapies available f to us for our patients, which is wonderful, except we don't know at that particular moment which is the right drug to give to that patient. And sometimes there are drugs that are not, aren't approved for breast cancer, but that might be particularly effective for that breast cancer. So to understand that particular tumor is what we mean by individualizing therapy. Did you uh, say that you're working with several other institutions? Because there are a lot of different companies and institutions that are trying to do the same thing. Are you all working together? So I wish we all work together more, mm -hmm. um, but it is a collaborative effort. Um, you know, Mayo, we have the amazing depth in the Department of Lab Medicine and Pathology um, to be developing tests, and we do. We've actually brought up some blood-based liquid biopsy tests for patients to be used now. You could actually order them for patients with metastatic melanoma, colorectal cancer, pancreatic cancer. And what would it cancer. tell you? So uh, in the setting of, uh, the, so these tests that we brought up are looking for mutations that we typically test in the tumor tissue, but to be able to identify them in the blood, we use them to actually select therapies. So. Wow, so you are using it to not only detect the cancer, but to help you tailor the therapy Yep. to whatever you find in the blood. Yep. It's a good wow. thing I'm sitting down. That's amazing. It is incredible. People have been trying to do this ever since I can remember. But yep. up until a few years ago, it was a pipe dream. Yep. And it's, you know, we're, we're really close. And again, I, in advanced disease, we have tools that we can use. Um, the issues about diagnosis and about screening are a little bit further away. But the technology has just advanced so much that it allows us to be able to do this on itty-bitty bits of tumor from uh, tumor DNA in the blood. Well, when you actually get a liquid biopsy in the blood where you can tell somebody if they have cancer and where it came from, we want to be the first to know. Okay. <laughs> All right. We've been talking about liquid biopsy, diagnosing cancer with a blood sample with Mayo Clinic oncologist, Dr. Mineta Liu. Dr. Liu, thanks so much for being with us. Thank you very much.